Very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. Max Olazika is my name. This week, this week, Sergio Ramos announced his football retirement with Spain. Remember, he's been an integral figure of the Spanish national team. Tiras, how do you make of such announcement? Big blow or the upcoming talents to fill his void? Maybe big blow for Spain, but for me, uh, my respect for Sergio Ramos died on the night when he intentionally fouled Mo Salah in the 2018 UEFA Champions League final. And he almost made Mo Salah miss out on the World Cup. Ah, I, I, I lost respect for him, but good luck to him. He's been a very committed player to have for Spain. Uh, all the best to him, that's all I can say. Sorry yourself? Too bad what do you, what you. do you remember <laughs> Sergio Ramos for the remarkable thing he's ever done? Uh, I think uh, one style of perform one career he has had as a defender. I think started with Villarreal back in I think 2000, 2002. He joined Madrid early 2002. All the time he has played for Madrid until he left for PSG. The accolades that he has won as a defender. I think five Champions League titles, the World Cup, the European. The, the everything as a player he has he has got it the, the thing is that he was not happy with the retirement i think the the new coach had uh, to send him a, an email and called him and told him that he is not in his uh, plans for the future for spain so it was not uh, his uh, time according to sergio ramos it was not his time for him to retire it was uh, just because now the spanish team does not need him but at the end of the day he has had a very good career as a player he has won everything is there to be won in football, nothing else for him to win. So as he rides on to the sunset, we'll miss Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos, one of the remarkable defenders to have, to have ever graced, you know, football, announcing football returning with his team Spain. Of course, he still features for his club Paris Saint-Germain. Yes. And uh, we'll keep watching him for the club, but not national team. Away from that, Man United resurgence under Eric Ten Hag. We've seen them beat Barcelona. That was, you know, some high-profile performance, you know. During return leg, they came from a goal down to beat their opponents and cement their qualification to the next stage where they will, they were paired against Villarreal, another Spanish... Betis. Real Betis, another yeah. Spanish opponent. What do you make of Man United under Eric Ten Hag? Was Cristiano Ronaldo the problem or something? No. Uh, as expected, they're doing very well, but... I remember last season, Osoro, when it was confirmed that Ten Hag would be moving to Manchester United. We were on this show with you yeah. and Eric Aganya, and you asked us what we think uh, Ten Hag will bring to the table. And we said, yes, he's going to turn things around at Manchester United. Both of us were very optimistic about it, but I'm rather shocked. I mean, they, all of a sudden, they're title contenders for the English Premier League as well. I didn't see that coming, to be honest. Uh, there's about 13 or 14 matches to go. Yeah. You really have to now factor them in, in the larger equation of the English Premier League title. No pressure for them to win, because they were not expected to. They're a team that's in transition, but they've done remarkably well to be considered as one of the hot three favorites. I think the coach himself uh, said that uh, enough of the compliments, uh, people are complimenting him uh, too much. I think for him the target was getting the top four, getting into the Champions League position. And uh, at the moment he's actually cementing that. You look at Newcastle, they are way behind where they are in the log to catch up with Manchester United at the moment. They are cementing that. The big thing is also how he has managed it to grand results out of the big six and also looking at defeating Barcelona on Thursday was I think a big Champions League night could have been for Manchester United even if it was in the Europa League beating Barcelona one key game for them that game against Liverpool the win against Liverpool early in the season I think changed the momentum for Manchester United and then the win against City Arsenal has it changed Manchester United. and now they have got that belief that they can do actually something. So come Sunday, they can get their first trophy under Ten Hag. And then now the, the trophies will measure the success, but the road to success, I think Manchester United fans are enjoying it at the moment. They've also got a good set of players that they've mm. bought. Uh, Manchester United was known under Sir Alex Ferguson to buy some of the best 
talent on, on the football market, be it established or talent that's establishing itself, yeah. and they've gone back to that uh, sort of thinking, that school of thought, and uh, Ten Hag, very commendable. They look like the Manchester United of your, but expectations, I think, will just go game per game. Remember the fact that they were two up against Barcelona away at the Nou Camp, which is no mean feat, and then they gave away that 2 nil lead for, and settled for a 2 all score. And also against Barcelona in the return leg earlier, midweek, this week, they didn't have to give away that penalty. Bruno Fernandes, if only he can focus on his football, he's a very fine and refined player. You, but he, you, sometimes he drives in you know, side shows yes, and side emotions. shows and a lot of whinging yeah. unnecessarily. He's got to grow up and just focus on his game. That guy can go places and help Manchester United go places as well. I think uh, he's got to be lucky to have a players who can uh, I think tolerate it, yeah, the no, shenanigans. I, I, I don't <laughs> think it's even uh, tolerate players who can bail you out when, when you make such kind of mistake. I think you saw it uh, with the Real Madrid and Liverpool when uh, Couture made uh, that mistake and uh, Mad Liverpool went 2-0 up. Everybody thought that game is done and dusted. But you could see players like uh, Luka Modric, Karim Benzema, just telling the other players Vinicius. to calm down. Yeah, calm down and now let's play the game. Madrid came back. They bailed Couture out of that. You look at Manchester United, it is not the first time they are going a goal down behind. Actually, many games they have come from behind. It's that. Now, you have made the mistake. It has happened. You have got to move on. You need those players who can rise up to the occasion and you saw, like, Ravel Verane, Martinez, Luxo, all of them are really performing very well. But I think you have also got to give it to the substitutes. Look at uh, Ganacho, Anthony. They just come in into the game, I think, uh, 65, 70 minutes of the game, and then they change the game completely. And you, you could have thought that these are just bench players, but when they come in, they play as if they are not bench players. Actually, they play as if they are first-team players looking for the win. But really, tomorrow's game is a final. Now so you should avoid said, those mistakes. Yeah, let's a talk final what, is serious. Yeah, let's talk what he said to happen tomorrow. Culmination of Carabao Cup, the final taking place tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. East African time, beating Manchester United against Newcastle. Elkton Hag up against Eddie Howe. And, you know, Newcastle has also been on resurgence mode. They've been performing very well since that ownership takeover. You remember how... You know, it was dubbed to be the next Manchester City of Paris Saint-Germain. And mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to seeing how high-profile players will continue, continue getting robbed into the team. So tomorrow the two teams are clashing and United has not won a silver in the last five years. I think the last time they grabbed a title was in 2017. And yeah, Mourinho. Jose Mourinho. Uh, Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Tomorrow, will it be, you know, a perfect start to... Their career laden. They, they would have been sort of slim or slight favourites. But remember, they had a game midweek. Newcastle have been, they've had more time to rest. So that could sort of work against them. But they, in terms of form, are a bit better than Newcastle United. Because even you, you watch the English Premier League table, they've swapped places. United have gone up and taken the position number three that was previously held by Newcastle United and Newcastle have gone down uh, to fourth place. So in terms of form, we'll say yes, Manchester United. But a final is a final and we saw that, what, in the World Cup final. Um, Argentina thought they had it home and dry and then 2 nil up, that's quite a, an impressive score. And then out of nowhere, France tied it to two all, stretched the game to extra time, and had Colomuani scored that last second kick, would be talking of Mbappe, Mbappe, Mbappe ever uh, being the greatest player ever, as opposed to Leo Messi. So Newcastle do have a fighting chance, and they are stronger physically. The, you, look at, you look at them and you've got to say, wow, this is a very strong side physically. And English football revolves around a lot of the physical element of, of football. And it's, it's rather interesting, uh, Kieran Trippier for Newcastle United, since the World Cup uh, break 
came to an end and we've come into this sort of second half of the season has created the most chances in the English Premier League, followed shortly by Bruno Fernandes, who's also uh, he's created the second most chances in the English Premier League. So they are balanced in terms of chances and finals are about chances. I've just spoken about Kolomwani uh, failing to finish off a chance that would have changed the course of footballing history. So tomorrow's game is fairly balanced. United would have had a slimmer edge over Newcastle had they not played midweek. With the final, you know anything can happen. No one is favourite. So between United and Newcastle, United has been revolving around Bruno Fernandes. Who is the face of Newcastle United? I, I, I totally disagree with the Tyras. I think uh, you look at Newcastle, you look at players like uh, Longstaff uh, coming in. Uh, Long, Longstaff is a key player. To, yeah, is a key player to watch for Newcastle. Trip, as he said, is a key player. There's, I think Traore, the 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 yeah, not Amanda. The, the Traore is a very key player for them, and they can actually trouble Manchester United. But for Manchester United at the moment, they have got key momentum on their side. Playing three four days after games. Players fighting for chances to get onto the side to play for Manchester United. And after a win against Barcelona, there's that fear factor. I don't think Eddie Howe is going to come to that match telling Newcastle players, go out and go head on, one on one with Manchester United. It's not going to happen. I think it's going to be a key match for Newcastle and I have a big feeling Newcastle will be laid back in this game. Manchester United is going to go all out for this game. For Manchester United, I think key players to watch there, I think the lineup that's played uh, Barcelona might be replicated for Newcastle. But I think now Juan Bissaka can be given a rest for Diego Dalot to come in and start the match. You look at uh, the likes of Garnacho being given a chance to start against uh, Sancho. But as you have, it's a final. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, my bet is with Manchester United. Personally, my Sunday is sorted because Super Sunday is it is as far as tomorrow is concerned. So myself and Ravel Morrison will be chilling somewhere, you know, to enjoy the proceedings because that game I think will be preceded by another Titanic clash between Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur. In, Tottenham is playing no. Chelsea. Tottenham up against Chelsea yeah. in what looks like another interesting fixture for Premier League and the title race and uh, we've seen how Manchester City are trying to cement their chances to defend the title they bagged last season and they're still on top of the table, right? They are second place. Second place. Arsenal yeah. is still on top of the Arsenal table. Top, but top. what's the overview and permutations regarding that tie? Chelsea up against you know Tottenham. We've seen Graham Potter, the tactician for the Blues, saying that since his arrival at Stamford Bridge, he's been receiving death threats because of you know a string of poor performances, yeah. regardless of how how much they have yeah. managed to spend on the transfer window, acquiring new players and bolstering their school. Well, death threats. That's unfortunate because. I mean, football at the end of the day is, is just a game and we shouldn't get to the, ex the extent of death threats. But mm -hmm. un unfortunately, it's happened before and those death threats are quite a common thing. Uh, I hope it, they're not act actuated and we don't have to lose any life because of football. <laughs> However, having said so, I think now if we go into the football, Tottenham Hotspur have a perfect chance to beat Chelsea. Right now, you, any true. team will come yeah. and, uh, and beat Chelsea. Yes. Uh, this is Tottenham's chance to beat Chelsea. They, two weeks ago, did not do well. Last week, they did well. This week, I don't know. That's Tottenham for you. Their graph at the moment reads like this. So that's where Chelsea get a lifeline against Tottenham. They're playing... They may be low, but they're playing against a Tottenham side that's not consistent. So this is a good time to rejuvenate themselves, Chelsea, and sort of come back to winning ways. But it's a derby, a London derby, and it's the team that pops up on the day that is bound to carry the day. Otherwise, it ends in a draw or you lose big time. And this is Tottenham's greatest Do chance Do you think Harry can continue with these heroic exploits after uh, breaking... 
that goal scoring record at Tottenham Hotspur. You know, people saying, pundits saying that, you know, Harry Kane has done everything at Spurs and it's high time now he looks for a challenge elsewhere where he can bag titles. I, I think it's because everybody is looking at the goals he has scored for Tottenham and those goals uh, speak of titles. But for Harry Kane, there's no title. I think uh, that is the major part. You score double digit goals every season 22 23 you are a golden boot winner but at the end of the day you don't have the premier league you don't have the fa cup you don't have the champions league I, the best they did was i think a final a semi-final with the pochettino in the champions league and uh, a final a final yeah. yeah so at the age he is at the moment those goals should equate to a trophy and it does not have them and i think it will go down as one of the best strikers in the game with a multitude of goals but with no accolade to go home with and uh, I, I understand where this man is coming from because <laughs> as a man united supporter they have been you know luring and chasing after the signature of Harry Kane and probably they want him to join Old Trafford to do what you know Robin Van Pass you remember when Sir Alex Ferguson acquired him he scored yes. you know several goals for the club was a top scorer for the season and helped them win an English Premier League title. I, I think and he at, with Manchester United at the, the moment. Day. Oh, by the way, I've seen yeah. pictures surfacing and very viral on Twitter <laughs> over Robin Van Persie training with United. Yeah, that can be happening. But I think for Harry Kane, at the moment, I don't think money matters. You look at uh, Chelsea. You can buy players with uh, large sums of money. They de they end up not performing, and you can buy players with the, no money at all. They, they came onto the team with no money at all and they end up, they end up performing. Look at the likes of Saka. Look, look at the likes of Nketiah. Uh, these are players who have come in onto the team and they are really performing, but they were bought with zero money. Harry Kane at the moment, he scores goals and he's, he's still uh, uh, in the money bracket for Tottenham. If Tottenham want to cash in for Harry Kane, it will be now. It will be now. Yeah, it's Indeed. not now. It's so not let's talk topic. about one player who has been, you know, making headlines globally by scoring several goals. He features for Napoli and is a Nigerian striker. His name is Victor Simen. Mm. Every club wants <laughs> to acquire that player. Yeah. Oh, yes. Who is Victor Simen? Victor yeah. Simen is a Nigerian international, born in 1998, uh, December of that year. So that makes him just over 24 years of age. But when you look at his CV, I must say it's quite admirable. In 2015, he won the FIFA Youth World Cup Under-17 tournament, played at the Africa Cup of Nations in 2019, did very well in that tournament. And they were amongst the last four teams in Nigeria. And now, of course, I mean, he's played in Germany for Wolfsburg, and now he's playing with Napoli and he's looking forward to winning the Italian Serie A. Napoli have not won the Italian Serie A since the golden era of Diego Armando Maradona. So that's over 30 years ago. And we might as well say it's in the bag, but it's always not over until the fat lady sings. Victor Osimhen has played a sterling role in their pursuit of that silverware. You saw him the other night um, for Napoli in Europe. He scored a goal. If he stays focused and honest, I think he's a player to look out for. Currently enjoying a colourful reputation and he's been a phenomenal figure in world football, club football. Do you see him you know, getting acquired by another club probably next season? Very much. If, uh, I think if you go with uh, good money to Napoli, I don't think they can uh, say no to that. I think uh, 100, 120, you can still go for any other club. But at the moment, I believe... Let him play the best he can for Napoli and we see Napoli lifting that uh, league. Gentlemen, of course, it's been a pleasure doing this every Saturday. One, two, three, touchline is the show on Y254. Maxwell Wasike is my name. Also, Robert, my co-host. And, you know, Tiras Wayaki, veteran broadcaster, my guest co-host this particular afternoon, also joining us to share his insights regarding what's happening in the world of sports. Of course, as we speak, Los Angeles Galaxy, Kenya, will be taking part in the leg, hoping to defy all odds and qualify to the main cup quarters, of course, in a tough group consisting of Fiji, Australia, alongside Japan. Back home also, Kenya Premier League is underway. Gormaya up against Kenya Police at 3 p.m. at Kasarani Stadium. We're going to see how that game ends, but also at Nyayo National Stadium, it is the track and field meeting, and Ferdinand Omanyala did what he's capable of doing best, the African fastest man and Commonwealth 100-meters uh, champion. 
running at 9.86 and probably in 2024 Paris Olympics we're gonna see him bagging that goal but before we wind up my producer Beatrice is saying we not doing a favor Christian Arthur a man who perished accidentally through Turkish earthquake of course he has played great football for Chelsea for Newcastle we lost him Osoro Robert it was a bad incident right Sorry for that. I <laughs> actually give her that. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I was saying uh, Christian Atsu, one of the best uh, players to come out of Africa for Ghana, turned out for Ghana in a World Cup matches. Uh, that generation of the likes of uh, Andrea Yu, they have been playing very well and they play, turned out for Newcastle. A very good career that he had and all the way that he went to Besiktas. What a player that we have lost. What a player he has. Mm, two weeks ago we were here, we spoke about him. There was slim hope that he may be found alive because there were still people being found alive. Unfortunately, after that, we got the sad news, what we had hoped against, that Christian Atsu had been found, but he'd not been found alive. He was dead amongst the thousands and thousands of people who've perished. So, again, condolences to all those who've been bereaved. May those that departed rest in eternal peace. And... May everyone recover from that trauma and best wishes to all those affected. Best wishes indeed. A tantalizing player in Christian Atsu who played for Chelsea alongside Newcastle United perishing through that Turkish earthquake. Quite unfortunate but of course from KBC Sports we send our condolences to those who are affected. May their families get enough fortitude and strength to stand with the big loss. Of course, the conversation continues even as the show comes to an end. Touchline. Y25 is the hashtag at Osike Maxwell at Osoro, but this man is not on Twitter. So, uh, at Titi Wayaki. At Titi Wayaki. <laughs> let's keep talking and let's keep enjoying the conversation and, you know, sharing what's happening as far as matter sports, both local and beyond is concerned. We're not segregating, not sports, swimming, uh, basketball, everything. Tell us what is happening in your neighborhood too and we shall be, you know, keeping the world... Uh, uh, know that you know you also passionate about sports it's been pleasure doing this to our camera crew the two gentlemen the three gentlemen the four gentlemen actually salute and god bless